was. We offer this mass in Thanksgiving for the 36th wedding anniversary of Maria and Helen Santos, Abeya. Yes, Congratulations. So they have the wedding anniversary. Also, we pray today for the happy calls of Robert Bonnie and Julia. Let us pass our joy scenes as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to my God and to you, and you my precious sisters, that I am greatly deceived in what I thought in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most religious fault, that I have asked this to Mary and her virgin. All angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy.
Thessalonians to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as they are teacher and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living Race, we do in the unity of the Holy Spirit of God forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Exodus. The whole community of the sons of Israel began to complain against Moses and Aaron and the wilderness and said to them, Why did we not die in the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt when we were able to sit down to find submit and to give bread to our heart's content? As it is, you have brought us to this wilderness to restore this whole company to him. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now I will rain down bread for you from the heavens. It's day, the people are to go out and gather the day's portion. I propose to test them in this way to see whether they will follow my Lord or not. I have heard the complaints of the sons of Israel, says to them, between the two evenings you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have bread to your heart's content. Then you will learn that I, the Lord, am your God. And so it came about, prayers flew up in the evening, and they covered the calm. In the morning there was a coating of dew all around the camp. When the coating of dew lifted, there in the surface of the desert was a thing that they kept pounding, as fine as one of us on the ground. When they saw this, the sons of Israel said to one another, What is that? Not knowing one of us. That, said Moses to them, is the bread the Lord gives you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. I want to urge you in the name of the Lord not to go on living the aimless kind of life that pagans live. Now that is hardly the way you have learned from Christ, unless you failed to hear him properly when you were taught what the truth is in Jesus. You must give up your old way of life. You must put aside your old self, which gets corrupted by following illusory desires. Your mind must be renewed by a spiritual revolution so that you can put on the new self that has been created in God's way in the goodness and holiness of the truth. The word of the Lord. But spiritual. 
So often, physical things do not satisfy our true spiritual needs. Jesus is the food for another part of us. He is the one who satisfies some of our hungers. Jesus is the bread of our life. Today's Gospel passage is taken from the Bread of Life discourse in John's Gospel. Here Jesus makes the unique, bold claim. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will, ne will never thirst. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes I meet people who say, I don't read the Bible because I cannot understand, it's too difficult for me. I don't read the Gospel because it's too difficult for me. But when we read this Gospel today, it is so clear. This Gospel doesn't need any interpretation. The words are so clear. Jesus in today's Gospel says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never come. It is so clear. Jesus in the Eucharist is the bread of life. Jesus in his word is the bread of life. And there are two types of hunger. There is a bodily hunger. We go to the shops, we buy food, we buy bread, we buy vegetables. This is the bodily hunger. But also there is a spiritual hunger. And Jesus is the bread of life. The words in today's gospel don't need, they don't need to be interpreted. We have to believe it. They don't need interpretation. Do we believe that Jesus Christ is present on the holy altar when we celebrate the Eucharist and we preach the word of God? So Jesus, in today's gospel, instructed those who had sought after him for earthly food that they should be fed by the bread that Jesus gives them. Some people accepted this teaching, but others turned away disappointed, because Jesus' challenge requires a commitment that they were unwilling to make. What is the life message for us today? We need to receive our spiritual nourishment from the Word of God. In the Holy Mass, the Church offers us two types of bread. The bread of life contained in God's Word and the bread of life contained in the Holy Eucharist. The powerful Word of God gives us strength and inspiration to fight and conquer our temptations and to practice Christian love by serving others and helping others by sharing with them our blessings. And all of us, each one of us, has his own blessings in his life. We are Christians and we need to share our blessings with others. We need to appreciate and gain the benefits of our Holy Communion with Jesus. Just as our normal food nourishes and strengthens our bodies, enables us to work, promotes physical growth, the same with the spiritual food in the Word of God and in the Holy Eucharist. We do these things and much more in our soul. What are the benefits of the Holy Eucharist? And that's why I encourage you to receive the Holy Eucharist, the Holy Communion, if you can, every day, or the priest every Sunday. Holy Eucharist, Holy Communion, unites us most closely to Jesus himself. The Eucharist unites us to Jesus. Jesus says, He that eats my flesh and drinks my body abides in me and I in him. In John 6. The second benefit of the Eucharist. The Eucharist unites each of us individually to each individual member of the human race to Christ. And I like, I love when I see families come together to receive the communion. Because 
when you receive communion, you get united to Christ, or to get united to your brother and sister who comes to receive that communion. So the second benefit of the Eucharist is that Eucharist unites each one of us to our brother and sister who receive the Eucharist. So back home, if you have an argument with your wife, with your kids, go to confession, go to receive the Eucharist, because the Eucharist has this benefit. The Eucharist unites us with our brother, with our sister, and this is the second benefit of the Eucharist. It unites each one of us to each individual member of the human race. The third benefit. The Eucharist imparts graces, including strength and power to withstand temptation and the desire to practice virtues in our life. The virtue of love, hope, trust, confidence. So the Eucharist helps us to practice virtues in our life. My dear brothers and sisters, today's gospel is very clear and it doesn't need so much explanation. These words need to be believed, not to be so much explained. So that is why I invite you, when you go home, to meditate on this gospel and also to ask Jesus from the Holy Eucharist to give you the same love he has for us. The sacrament of the Eucharist is the sacrament of God of Jesus. Jesus chose to stay with us at the Holy Altar and there is no greater love than the love of Jesus on the altar. We receive the, the love of Jesus in the Eucharist let us ask him to show the same love to our brothers and sisters back home. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. The only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and be, substantial with the Father, through him all things were made, first man and first salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated in the church and For our sake he was crucified and the Holy Spirit. Suffered death and was buried, and rose again in the third day, in the first of the Jesus. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and Giver of God, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one only God who is the Church. I confess the Lord of the Lord and I look forward to the restoration of the land and the life of the world to come. The love of Christ gathers us in communion together to be nourished by word and sacrament. In faith and trust, let us present our needs before Him. That the church and all who follow Christ may constantly seek nourishment from the bread of life given to us as food for our joy. <coughs> Lord, hear us. Lord, Jesus, hear us. For the Pope's intention for August, that those who govern may have policies directed by what is good for all, especially the poor and those unemployed and homeless. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That our parish and our community may be a place of welcome for the stranger and for those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That we may always be good stewards of God's creation and protect it for future generations to enjoy and aware of its wonder and fragility. 
illiterate and elderly really put his passion if he took bread and give it thanks Loki. I'm giving you this design of the same. Babies, all of you, and little me. For this is my body, which will be given now for you. In a similar way, one suffer was ill, if he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave to his disciples saying, Babies, all of you, and pray for me. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Sins, but on the faith of your 
Church, and gracious to grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, to be the reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
have the way of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will not, will not harm them, and whoever believes in me will not curse. Let us pray. <coughs> Accompany with constant adoration of our Lord to renew with his heavenly gifts, and in your name of faith, faith in prayer for them, may them work into the eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for your participation today in this holy mass. Thank you very much for the choir, the singers, and the congregation. And also, congratulations to Mama and Helen Santos on their wedding anniversary. God bless you, and uh, we pray for you. The Lord be with you. And with your the spirit. And I want to bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is a growing peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.